In Godot, when you want to attach a script to a node, you're actually going to have to make sure the script extends the node type. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this child script to this node, and the child doesn't currently extend the node type. So if I were to run this, it's going to cause an error. You're going to just go ahead and have to do extends node 2D. And this is automatically done when you add a node via this method. It just extends or inherits and then the node type. So if we were to run this, it just tells it, hey, child ready, this is a child test. Along with being able to extend node type 2D, it could extend scripts that extend node type 2D. An example of this would be this parent script. It extends node 2D, so in the child, if I wanted to, I could tell it to extend the parent. This could be done via giving it the path to the script or by using class names. Now, if I go ahead and run this using the path, it still works, and it should be the exact same using a class name. So inside the parent, I'm going to go ahead and just create a class name. The advantage of doing it like this, you don't need the direct path to it, and you could call it in basically any script you want. Now it expand, extends the class parent, which this is the class parent. So I go ahead and just run this, and it is the same. Now, you could actually overwrite functions. This child has a test function that it's calling that says, this is child test. If I were to get rid of that, it is not going to work because it doesn't have that function. But in the parent, I could add that function and it would still work. So this time, instead of saying child test, it's going to say parent test. So if I run that, it says child ready, parent test. But if I were to add the child function back in, the child function overwrites the parent function. So it's only going to call the child function, not the parent function. This is a child test, even though the parent function is there. But not all functions could be overwritten. For example, I found that the ready function can't be overwritten. So if I were to have a ready function in the parent and ready function in the child, that would cause both the parent and the child once run. The parent ready runs before the child ready, so keep that in mind. But also, if I were to call test function inside the parent, if the child overwrote the function, it calls the child's function. So if I uncomment this, and I comment out this test function, so only the parent is calling the test function, it's still going to call the child's test function. This is a child test. And it called that before calling the child ready, because this ready function calls before the child ready function. Now, if I wanted to call the parent function, maybe like inside of the child function, I could do dot test function. And this is going to say call the parent's version of test function. I'm going to go ahead and just run that. And it calls the child test, and then it calls the parent test. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just comment this out. So the parent is no longer calling test function. I should be able to tell the child to call only the parent's function. So instead of telling it to call its version of the function, it says call the parent's version of the function. So go ahead and read really run that. And it calls the parent's test instead of its own test. Now, an example of where one might use this is I often use the Q3 function. This tells it to delete the node. Sometimes when I'm deleting the node, I want to tell it, hey, do specific things before you delete this node to make sure the data is how we want it to look. Maybe like increase the player's score if you're deleting an enemy node. Now this Q3 function, if I just call it like this, I'm no longer going to be able to delete the node via the Q3 function because this is overriding it. So usually what I would do is say print add score. Instead of print, I would actually add the score and then I would do dot Q3. So it's telling, hey, I'm going to overwrite this Q3 function and I'm going to add some score and then I'm going to delete myself. So to test this, I'm just going to call the Q3 and then add score. So it would add score before it deletes itself. Now, along with being able to add functions in the parents, you could add variables. For example, I have this export variable, which will allow me to change the test variable because it's exported in the editor. However, that isn't in the child script, it's in the parent script. You could change parents and child's exports inside the editor, but variables can't be overwritten. So if I have a test var equals seven, if I try to run that, that's going to error out because test var already exists in a parent class. So if you wanted to overwrite the variable, you're going to want to do that in a ready function. So instead I do test var equals eight. So let's say I wanted to build a quick function that just prints the test var. I tell the child, hey, set test var to eight. Now print the test var, which is called parent func. I'm going to go ahead and delete a lot of this to clear things up. And let's go ahead and just, and now it says test var eight. So even though the parent had it set to three, I changed it to eight 
and then I printed it. This was a short video just covering the inheritance and class names in Godot. I hope it was able to teach you something, and I'll see you in the next one.